the Chicago Bears continuously find themselves struggling to be better than mediocre. Sure, the team has had a few outliers of success, but Bears fans are tired of mediocrity. It is not like the team is short of talent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Khalil Mack, Akeem Hicks Eddie Jackson and Roquan Smith are proven all-stars. The defense has some serious depth too with players like Danny Trevathan, Kyle Fuller, Bilal Nichols and the new addition Jalen Johnson. The problem has always been and continues to be that the offensive side of the ball, even with talent like Allen Robinson and David Montgomery, has not been able to match the performance consistent with the defense. Instead of seeing drastic changes this offseason, ownership has doubled down with Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. The one difference here is that the team and Mitch Trubisky are parting ways. This has left many wondering what exactly will happen on the offensive side of the ball, most specifically at quarterback. Every possible quarterback, Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Derek Carr, Sam Darnold and more, who might have the slightest possibility of being available via trade have been linked to the Chicago Bears. Clearly, the offense needs to be the focus once again this offseason, but Ryan Pace and company cannot just ignore the defensive side of the ball. This brings us to the point of this article. In a video message yesterday, J.J. Watt announced that he will be moving on from the Houston Texans. Watt was under contract and due to receive $17.5 million in 2021. However, he did not have a dead cap hit and the team tried to do right by him as he asked to be released. Now, J.J. Watt has the ability to move on to any team he desires this offseason. Will he go home to Wisconsin? Will he move further east to play with his brothers in Pittsburgh? Or, could he decide to play in the same city as his wife, who plays for the Chicago Red Stars? Currently, one oddsmaker has the Bears with the fourth best odds of landing Watt this offseason. However, is signing J.J. Watt to a contract in Chicago a good or bad idea? We weigh the pros and cons. 1. Chicago Bears signing J.J. Watt, the cons. Who wouldn't want a five-time pro bowler and first-team all-pro on their team? Although Watt is not a spring chicken any longer, he still has plenty of value to offer a team. This is even more true now that his price tag is no longer a trade plus $17.5 million. This does not mean that signing to any team is a good idea though. The price tag is still likely too high this is pure speculation as J.J. Watt could easily take a very team-friendly deal to play wherever he wants to play. However, even at the age of 32, Watt will still bring plenty to the table in 2021. He will command a decent salary and with the Chicago Bears' current salary cap situation, signing J.J. Watt is just not a priority. I have a feeling that Watt will likely sign for a minimum of $8 million per year when he moves on. I know that's a far cry from the $17.5 million he was scheduled to make, but it's still more than the Chicago Bears should invest knowing they still have Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn under contract. J.J. Watt's recent injury history Another reason the Chicago Bears should not look to sign J.J. Watt is that he is not likely to finish the 2021 season. Over the last five years, Watt has only played 16 games in two of those seasons. Over an 80-game span, Watt only played 48 of them. Watt has experienced a herniated disc 2016 and a season-ending knee injury 2017. He did bounce back in 2018 as he played all 16 games, finished with 16 sacks, 60 pressures and once again reached all-pro status. In 2019, Watt saw his season come to an end due to a pectoral injury. Then last year, he once again played in all 16 games. However, he saw his production drop drastically with only 5 sacks and 29 pressures. J.J. Watt will be 32 years old in 2021 The Houston Texans were not good in 2020, and J.J. Watt was no exception. He too struggled despite playing 91% of the Texans' defensive snaps. Has age and his injuries started to catch up to him? The Chicago Bears are not afraid to bring in older veteran pass rushers. The team did the same thing with Julius Peppers, 30, Jared Allen, 32, and more recently Robert Quinn, 30. Peppers proved to be a great signing. Allen was just an okay signing, and as of now, Quinn looks to be a bad signing. Will Ryan Pace even consider adding yet another declining pass rusher to the mix? 
I would guess not before a focus on the offensive side of the ball. The defense needs more youth too. Chicago Bears signing J.J. Watt, the pros not all is bad when it comes to J.J. Watt though. In fact, he might have a renewed vigor to produce at a high level moving to a new team. Playing with his brothers makes a lot of sense as the three of them, especially him and T.J. will find a way to feed off of one another. J.J. Watt is still a star with plenty to offer. The Chicago Bears defense is not the Houston Texans defense. This team has way more talent on the defensive side of the ball. Should the Chicago Bears bring J.J. Watt in, he would likely play the opposite of Akeem Hicks. The team would see a rotation of Hicks, Watt and Bilal Nichols should the two sides come to an agreement. With Eddie Goldman coming back to man the middle, Nichols could also rotate out at that position as we saw this season. On paper, this is one hell of a line. Although Watt only recorded five sacks in 2020, do not sleep on him. He has the ability and the talent has the ability and the talent to bounce back. However, do the Chicago Bears have the luxury to bring in a guy like Watt this year? That's a tough call. Others will follow a player like JJ Watt. Maybe bringing in JJ Watt is exactly what the Chicago Bears need to do. Did you see what happened this offseason when the Chicago Bears missed out on Tom Brady? Brady not only won the Buccaneers a Super Bowl, but he did so by bringing in some veteran talent to play with him. Leonard Fournette, Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski all followed Brady and played important roles throughout the season on their way to winning Super Bowl 55. Should the Chicago Bears sign J.J. Watt to a team-friendly deal, it is possible adding him to the roster will sway the decision of others to come play in Chicago. In fact, could it lead to Deshaun Watson waiving his no-trade clause to come play for the Bears if Watt was already signed? I would think it could play a part. The end. Chicago Bears signing J. Recently wrote about some risky, out-of-the-box trades the Chicago Bears could make in an attempt to land Deshaun Watson. Without those trades, the Bears really have no shot of convincing the Texans to send them Watson as the team has very little draft capital to offer. Within the final trade, I had the Bears landing J.J. Watt along with Watson. This was because the team had traded away Khalil Mack and needed to recoup a pass rusher. Now, this does not mean that I think the team should run out and sign Watt now that he's a free agent. Although this does look better on paper as he is unlikely to earn those $17.5 million dollars he was scheduled to make this year. Watt could still add more to a pass rush that struggled to be better than average last season. If Watt was willing to come to Chicago on a cheap, possibly backloaded deal, I would be perfectly fine with Ryan Pace bringing him in. He still has plenty of upside and I like the idea of him swaying others to possibly join the te team. The key here is the numbers. What can Ryan Pace and the Chicago Bears do to finagle the salary cap in order to make enough room for Watt? The Chicago Bears should sign J.J. Watt only if they can secure a quarterback or plan to draft one in the first round and also add some key pieces offensive line and wide receiver to the offense. Watt should not be paid more than $8 million in AAV by the Bears and as I said, it should be a short-term deal that is backloaded to help with cap space in 2021.